Imagine this. The United States of America is demolishing not one, but four massive hydroelectric dams at the cost of $450 million, while most countries around the world are competing for who can build more. This might sound strange, but in reality, America has actually demolished a mind-numbing 2,025 dams nationwide since 1912. In 2022 alone, 65 dams were removed, and many are destined to follow in the next decade. The removal of the four Klamath dams is different because the size and scope of the project make it the largest dam removal project in the history of the U.S. Interestingly, these four dams, which make up the Lower Klamath Hydropower Project in California's Siskiyou County and Klamath County in Oregon, are being torn down for the sake of revegetation and the return of salmon fishing, among other species. Why is the removal of these perfectly fine and operational hydro dams so important? And how are they going to remove such colossal structures? The Lower Klamath Hydropower Project was built between 1912 and 1962, a period during which no one really cared about the environment, fish population, and water quality. Back then, hydropower was a priority, and America was becoming an electricity-hungry behemoth at a terrifying pace. The dams are owned by Pacificorp, an electric company owned by Warren Buffett's conglomerate Berkshire Hathaway, which has been coming under a lot of pressure in the past two decades due to the mounting damage these dams inflicted on the local ecosystem. In 2006, the company found these dams have become a liability and are no longer financially feasible. So in 2016, it made a deal with the state and the Yurok and Karak Native American tribes to transfer the dams and related infrastructure to the Klamath River Renewal Corporation, a nonprofit tasked with the removal of the dams and the restoration of the river's ecosystem. Since these dams were constructed, they have been nothing but a disaster for the environment. For many decades, the Klamath River, which is California's second largest river in terms of average discharge, has been slowly dying and become increasingly void of many fish species, including salmon. The quality of water also declined and the hundreds of miles of habitats that hosted indigenous species became obsolete. The solution was obvious, but the dams were just necessary for the electricity supply. For decades, the Hoopa, Carrick, Yurok, Shasta, Klamath, and Modoc people spearheaded a collective effort to remove the Klamath dams. They did not get a break until 2016 when the dams were finally slated for demolition. The benefits of removing the Klamath dams promise a wide range of ecosystem benefits, from spawning habitat for fish and elimination of toxic algae to increased dissolved oxygen in the river and bringing salmonid populations back from the brink of disappearance. Other benefits include the restoration of habitat for a variety of species and enhanced fisheries, as well as flora and fauna that depend on healthy rivers to thrive. There are also some economic benefits such as tourism and related recreational activities and even commercial fishing. In a nutshell, the removal of the dams is ultra healthy for the environment, wildlife, people, and the economy. The green light for the demolition of the four dams became official in November 2022 after the U.S. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission approved the transfer of the license for the Lower Klamath Project from Pacificorp to the states of California and Oregon and the Klamath River Renewal Corporation. The four dams are the John C. Boyle Dam, which is located farthest upstream and is 68 feet tall, 693 feet long, and is a combination embankment and concrete structure completed in Oregon in 1958. The next farthest upstream facility is the Copco No. 1 Dam, which is 126 feet tall and 415 feet long. It is a concrete gravity arch dam that was completed in California in 1918. Approximately a quarter mile downstream of Copco No. 1 is the smallest of the four dams, the 33 feet high, 278 feet long Copco No. 2 Dam which is also a concrete gravity dam that was completed in California in 1925. 
Finally, the 173 feet high, 740 feet long Iron Gate Dam is an earth fill structure located eight miles downstream from the Copco No. 2 Dam and was completed in California in 1962. The company in charge of the removal process is Kiwit Infrastructure West Corporation, which is one of North America's largest and most respected engineering and construction companies. It will deliver the dam removal project by means of a progressive design-build approach. Preparations for the demolition of the first dam, Copco No. 2, began in March 2023, and the process is quite complex. These preparations take up to nine months because access roads for heavy machinery have to be built, and bridges in the area have to be improved to handle a large number of heavy truck traffic during the dam removal process. Work on the drawdown of the reservoirs of three bridges is already underway. A concrete work pad is being constructed on the downstream side of Copco No. 1. The work pad will enable crews to drill a new 10 feet diameter at it through the dam's base. A steel pipe is then installed and covered with earthen material from the dam's spillway apron. In early 2024, the drawdown of the reservoir will begin as the plug at the upstream end of the tunnel is blasted and removed. As for the smallest dam, Copco No. 2, it is already being removed by the means of drilling and blasting. At the Iron Gate Dam, an existing low-level tunnel will be strengthened to ensure that it can withstand the hydraulic forces associated with the reservoir drawdown. As for the J.C. Boyle Dam, existing culverts under the dam will be used to facilitate the drawdown of its reservoir. These existing culverts were used to divert water during the dam's construction. They are blocked at their upstream end by concrete stop logs, which will be removed by blasting for the drawdown of the reservoir. It is expected that the drawdown of the reservoirs will begin in January 2024 and last a few months. The drawdown also means that a colossal amount of accumulated sediment has to be removed. To do this, they utilize the water power in the reservoirs as the low-level outlet opens, which allows that material to mobilize and flush out through the system. Additionally, they apply mechanical-assisted sediment flushing to reduce the risk of slumping or failure or to create more favorable conditions for habitat and fish passage. Once the reservoirs are emptied, drilling and blasting of more than 2.7 million cubic feet of concrete and thousands of tons of steel begins along with the excavation of 35 million cubic feet of earthen material. Much of these materials will be incorporated within the nearby landscape. For example, earthen material removed from the J.C. Boyle Dam will be placed in the uplands around the edge of the current reservoir, while concrete rubble will be used to fill in a large scour hole that has formed at the base of the diversion spillway near the powerhouse. For the Iron Gate Dam, most of the material removed from the earthen dam with a clay core will be returned to the original borrow pit that resides just up above the location of the dam itself and then revegetate it. Excess concrete rubble from all the dams will be compacted and crushed and placed in a disposal site near the facilities themselves, then covered with topsoil and replanted. The project will be completed by the end of 2024. However, work will continue to restore the river itself as 8,000 acres of land has to be fixed to increase habitat resilience. Some seeding, erosion, and sediment control work on the reservoir footprints has already begun. However, one to two years will be allowed to allow the river to take its natural course and shape since its flow will change and return to its historical channel. Once that's achieved, the final restoration touches are applied to improve habitat conditions. Monitoring of the river conditions and habitats will continue until 2030 to ensure that goals such as the return of salmon and trout are achieved and water quality is improved. Thank you for watching and please share, like, comment and subscribe as we continue to bring you the most recent and fascinating mega projects news from around the world.